Hello you guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel for my first video of 2022. My name is Jacqueline Noel and I post videos every week on fashion, travel, and lifestyle content. So if you're interested in those things, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like, and comment on this video. <laughs> As you guys can tell by the title of today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit something different and actually we're going to be walking through my wish list for this year. Since it's the beginning of the year, I like to reset in many ways and one of those ways is trying to consolidate down the list of things that I want, uh, especially things that may be a little bit more expensive so that I'm not just impulse buying throughout the year. So I'm going to take you guys through my wish list. It's a couple of different categories. I have jewelry, I have clothes, as well as a couple of handbags. So Let's get right into it. Okay, y'all, there are several items on my wish list, so I'm gonna be using my new iPad Air, which was actually one of my wish list items from last year to help me keep track. So we can go ahead and get started in the category of jewelry. Now, if you guys have been subscribers to my channel, you may have noticed that I typically don't wear a lot of jewelry. It's usually just a simple necklace, maybe some studs or some hoops, and that's pretty much the extent of my jewelry collection. But I would like to change that this year. Uh, and while I do have a lot of what I would say is like fashion jewelry, so not fine jewelry, I think I want to start moving towards investing in more fine jewelry pieces because I feel like they're just going to last me a lot longer. They're going to uphold, you know, against wear and tear. And so I'd really like to invest in a couple more pieces. And specifically, I'd like to buy some pieces from Missouri. So Missouri and I actually did like a sponsored post on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, go and check that out for sure. But Missouri has really beautiful beautiful pieces and the reason why i'm drawn to them is really because of the affordability now i would love to you know be able to afford like the cartier bracelets of the world but that's just not realistic for me and my budget so staying under like the 500 dollars range is definitely definitely more in my lane and missouri is allowing me to do that so the first piece that i want to get from missouri is actually a combination of two pieces i believe that the necklace is called the baby box chain and then I want to get that paired with the diamond letter pendant. My name starts with a J, so I would get the letter J. I think that this piece is really cute and girly, but also something that, again, is going to withstand the test of time. Diamonds are very classic. And just having a nice petite gold chain, I think, would just be great for everyday wear and really something that's easy to stack with other jewelry pieces. I would also like to add the curved chain 14 karat gold necklace now this is a pretty just basic gold chain i'm sure you can find variations of it everywhere but again the reason why i'm leaning towards buying it towards from missouri is because of that high quality and the good price i also want to start moving towards jewelry pieces that like i don't have to take off all the time so for example for my birthday my parents got me this little chain bracelet and they picked it up i think it was from maybe tj maxx so really wasn't all that expensive it was maybe like in the $100, $200 range, and I have not taken it off since the day that I put it on. I shower with it, I sleep with it, and I like jewelry pieces that are easy for me in my lifestyle that I constantly don't have to worry about, oh, I don't wanna get this wet, oh, I need to take it off for X, Y, and Z reason. So, like I said, Missouri has great options for that, so I'm really looking forward to investing in those two necklaces this year. And before I move on from jewelry, one other thing that I wanna mention outside of necklaces is a pair of earrings. Also from Missouri, I don't have the exact name written down in front of me, but they are just a kind of like medium sized hoop that have the diamonds around the outside. Again, another piece that I think is really classic and beautiful and just can be worn so many ways. You can dress them up, dress them down, you know, use them for special occasions. Right now, I'm not really going anywhere because I've just been in the house as a result of COVID, but you know, maybe later on this year, if things get better, that's something that I'd want to invest in for the outfits where I'm trying to get more dressy or see myself going out more on dates or going out with friends or something like that. So definitely like those and hoping to also add those to my collection. So next up on my wish list, let's talk about shoes. So for this one, I have like a couple of specific pairs of shoes that I want to get as well as just some categories of shoes that I want to get, things that I'm just envisioning. So in terms of specifics, I really used to be big on sneakers and I've really moved away from that in the last couple of years and replaced it with, you know, heels and things like that. But I'd really like to start adding to my sneaker collection once again. So I have here on my list that I would like a pair of the Nike Dunks, the high ones in the classic black and white color. Now I have a couple of sneakers in black and white. I have my Balenciagas, I have a pair of Converse, but I want something that's supposed like, that's really, really comfortable for me to just walk around in and I can throw on with any outfit. 
And from what I've seen on Instagram, people styling them, the dunks seem really versatile. I do have a pair of the, I think they're called the aluminums, which are like a light blue and white, but that is not, you know, for everyday wear for me personally. So I would like to get the black and white ones. Now that being said, if you guys know anything about buying sneakers, you know that the resale market is just absolutely crazy. They hike the prices up so much. So there's like a certain ceiling that I'm willing to hit when it comes to paying resale prices, but I'm not about to pay three, three, $300, 350, 400 for a shoe that retails for only $100 for $115. So if I'm able to find a decently, you know, a decently priced retail price, I may add those to my, my collection, but if the prices are just going crazy, then probably just gonna hold off on those. Then the next pair of shoes or the next category of shoe, shoes that I want, I want more boots. As I was looking through my fall wardrobe this year and my winter wardrobe, I felt like that was the biggest thing that was missing for me. I have a couple of boots that I showed in my fall essentials collection, but I don't have any tall boots. All my boots are ankle boots or flat boots. And I really want, first of all, I want a classic pair of just knee high stiletto boots, uh, pr preferably with a pointed toe. But then I also just want to add like, just like a show stopper like sickening pair of boots and I've seen so many different ones but unfortunately I wear a size seven and a half and a lot of the websites that sell kind of dupes for those like Paris Texas type of boots like Public Desire and Ego Official things like that they only sell their shoes in whole sizes and so I really struggle since being a seven and a half going between a seven and a size eight because either it's going to be too big or too small it's never just a perfect fit so I'm gonna be on the hunt this year for just some really good boots. Again, like Paris, Texas is probably my inspiration. I don't necessarily wanna pay Paris, Texas prices because they're you know upwards of $500 per pair of boots. However, I think their styles are really cute. I think their colors are really fun. They have different um, you know materials like with the Croc emboss and things like that. So I really, really wanna add some just show-stopping boots to my collection this year. So next up, we have the clothing category. And similar to my shoe kind of category that I just went through, there are a couple of specific things that I want to pick up and then there are just some more broad categorizations of things that I'd like to get in 2022. So one of the specific pieces that I'd like to get first is the, I don't know the name of it specifically, uh, but it is this white and orange halter top from Hanifa. Now I do not have any, what I would consider like luxury designer clothing. All of my clothing comes from pretty regular stores, you know, like Abercrombie, Zara, Asian, and things like that. So investing in a piece of Hanifa clothing would definitely be a big step for me. However, I just think that this top is so beautiful and I really don't have a lot of color in my wardrobe and I really want that to change this year. And I think that this top is a great starter piece. Um, I've heard that it's really great quality. I've seen several people style it online so many different ways so i would love to add this piece to my collection hanifa is also a black owned brand and i think that her pieces are so so beautiful like the colors the materials that she uses the different silhouettes i think all of her collections are really fun however like i said i haven't you know hit the the place in my life where i'm ready to just be out here buying luxury designer clothing for my everyday clothing so I think starting with one piece is realistic for me and maybe trying to find dupes or some of her other pieces through Amazon or um, or Zara or things like that, you know, could help ease me into the kind of styles that I'm looking for. And speaking of color, that's also another category that I'd like to add into my wish list for 2022. Again, if you've been watching my videos, you'll notice that I have a lot of neutral pieces and I have a lot of basics. Now, there's nothing wrong with having basics in your wardrobe. I think that they're 100% an essential because you don't want to always just have super trendy pieces because you'll find yourself having to constantly recycle your clothes and you know look for new things as the trends change every year however i think i have totally hit my cap on basics like i don't need any more basics i don't need any more black tops i don't need any more body suits i want to start moving towards having you know some trendier pieces but not entirely a collection of trendy pieces for my wardrobe and i really want to start playing around with the type of silhouettes that i use um, I have this top from Zara that I wore in several vlogs back that was like a Jacques Mousse style blouse and it's just a white blouse but just the way that it's the way that it was designed the cuts on the shirt make it different from a lot of the other tops that I have and I want to start looking for pieces like that things that are different and really out of my comfort zone especially pieces that have different colors outside of my normal tan white black 
and occasionally some blue. And keep kind of keeping on with that theme, I also want to start to invest in some more fun bottoms. So in my last haul, I think, yeah, my last haul video, I showed you guys some leather pants that I picked up from Abercrombie. And those were, you know, again, in that kind of basic color wheel of colors, they're just black and brown, but they are a different type of pant than I typically am used to. I have a lot of skinny jeans, I have a lot of sweatpants, but I don't have a lot of straight leg or wide leg pants. So adding those pants to my collection really helped to start really helped me to start having more versatile outfits and so i'm looking forward this year to finding some more fun bottoms in different materials maybe different textures i hesitate to say like a whole bunch of different patterns because i am curvier on the bottom and sometimes a lot of patterns on my body just don't look the best for me personally so we'll see how i play around with patterns but i would love some really wide leg and flowy flowy pants for the spring and the summertime there is an Instagrammer, her name is Tanika, and she styles wide leg pants on her body and color so, so well. So she's definitely one of my style inspirations as we start to move into the spring and summer in a couple of months. Um, but yeah, so I just want to start to expand my wardrobe a little bit, play around with color a little bit more, and, and just be a little bit more fun. So lastly, on my wish list of items for 2022, of course, we have to finish out with some handbags. I think at this point I have to just stop saying that I'm not a handbag girl anymore because I don't know I've just I've switched up I like handbags now I think that they add another dimension to an outfit and I feel like whenever I go out especially for something I'm getting dressed up for I feel like a handbag is the thing that I need to complete my outfit so I'm not gonna venture to say I'm 100% a handbag girl yet but we're on the road so the first handbag that I have on my list is one that I have been wanting for well over a year. Uh, I didn't get it this year because I tried to keep myself, um, especially when it comes to buying luxury designer things, I definitely have to keep myself within a realistic budget, uh, you know, because I'm just a regular working girl, um, not quite at that level where I can just splurge on tons of very expensive items all at one time. So this first handbag is the YSL Mini Cassandra in the black and the grained leather. I think that this bag is everything that I want in a handbag. So if you look at the picture, I'm gonna pop up a picture um, on the screen. It has the gold YSL logo on the front, which actually serves as the clasp for the bag. And I think that you twist, it's either the S or the L to open up the bag, which I think is so fun and so unique and different. And then it is also a top handle bag or a, you can wear it as a crossbody or shoulder bag. Now you guys know, I've talked about this before, if I'm going to invest in a handbag, I prefer that handbag to have a crossbody option. I just am not a shoulder bag kind of girl. They're annoying to me. I feel like they're always gonna fall off. So I either wanna be holding it in my hand, top handle, or I wanna be able to just sling it across my shoulder. And you can do both of those with this bag. What I really like about this bag also is that I think it is so versatile. I think you can wear it so many ways. I think one of the pictures I saw for a street where I saw was of Hailey Bieber wearing this bag with just like some sweatpants and some gym shoes and a nice coat. And I thought like when I initially saw this bag, I was like, oh yeah, this is more of an evening bag, a dinner bag, something to dress up. But the way that she styled it was so casual and it still looked so nice and added something cute to the outfit. So I would look forward to using this bag for really any and everything, especially because of the grained leather. It really makes that bag very, very durable as opposed to like my Balenciaga hourglass bag, that's a smooth leather. So I would not be inclined to be using that every single day just because of the scratches and the wear and tear on that smooth leather versus a grain leather. You know, I'm not gonna be throwing around my bag necessarily, but I won't have to be babying it as much as I would that other bag. So I am hoping and praying that this bag comes into my possession. Um, right now, when I make these wish lists, I also like to make, uh, you know, predicted purchase dates. And so right now I have myself potentially purchasing this bag in the fall just because, you know, I'm going out of town. I'm going to be um, potentially out of town for a while and somewhere warm. And I just don't think I need this bag in that kind of environment right now. And by the time that I come back to work to Illinois, it's going to be probably around the springtime. So I just see myself realistically just using this bag more in the fall and winter. So therefore I have put it on my list for fall 2022. So the next bag that we have on this list uh, is actually a bag from Jacques Mousse and it is the Le Grand Bambino in the white color. Now I have never purchased a Jacques Mousse bag before. I know he became really, really popular because of those micro bags that are like 
the size of my hand. I was just never really a fan of those one because I'm all about practicality. If I'm going to be buying a piece that is really over $75, it needs to be able to fit something more than a quarter. So when I saw this Le Grand Bambino bag and I started to watch YouTube reviews on it, I saw that you could actually fit things inside of it. And I actually really liked the shape as well. And again, it has the top handle or crossbody option, which is the style that I prefer. So I'm definitely leaning towards this bag. And I'm also leaning towards this bag because I have looked through my small handbag collection and I've noticed that I don't have a just purely white handbag for the spring and summertime. Now I do have the Coach Hutton saddlebag, which is just a purely crossbody or shoulder bag option. Um, and I do like to use that in the spring and summer. However, it's like an off-white color. And I wouldn't say that I could translate that bag into evening wear. Like I really only use it for the daytime when I'm out in the spring and summer. So I think that the Jacques Mousse Le Grand Bambino is a great option. Again, you can wear it more casually because of that crossbody option, or you can pop that strap off um, and just use it for an evening bag. And again, because it is pure white, I think it'll just match with a lot more of my outfits in the spring and summertime. So I'm looking out for that bag. I know that Jacques Mousse is known to go on sale a lot on websites like Sense or Essence or, or Farfetch or things like that. So I'm going to keep my eyes peeled. Hopefully I can get that bag on a discount, but definitely one that I would also like to add to my collection. And then the last bag that we have on our list is another Jacques Mousse bag. And this is the Le Chiquito Long. Now, again, the bag I think that Jacques Mousse became popular for was originally the Le Chiquito, which is like the super, super small one. But this one actually is bigger than the original small size, and it's also longer, so you can fit some things in it. And I don't have a specific color that I want this bag in just yet, but I know, do know that I want it in a color. As I talked about with my clothing portion of this video, I want to add more color into my closet. Right now, I think my handbags consist of black, cream, and maybe beige. And while those are classic colors, I would like to play around with some fun things for the spring and summer. So I think that this small little bag is a perfect way to do that. It's not too, too expensive on the designer side. And again, you can probably always find it on sale. And it comes in a multitude of colors. I think it comes in like a blue, black, white, pink, orange, sage and i also actually just saw on farfetch that they came out with like a baby blue color that has kind of like a croc embossed detail which i'm really really looking at because blue is my favorite color and i specifically love that shade of blue that they've done i could see myself wearing it a couple different ways uh, throughout the spring and summer so i would like to get my hands on that one just to kind of round out adding color to my wardrobe through my accessories all right, you guys, so that rounds out my wish list for 2022. I'm sure that there's going to be many more things that I'd like to add as the year goes on. So there might be a part two to this video in a couple of months, but I'd love to know what you guys think of the items that I have on my wish list down below in the comments. Also comment and let me know what you guys are thinking about buying this year. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and comment on this video if you enjoyed it today and subscribe to my channel. There's lots of great content coming this year.